instantly. Yeah, for live. Okay. We're live. <laughs> Hi everyone. Uh, very happy to be live with Axel Moulton. He's gonna start us off with an intro to him and his book. Hi everyone, I'm Axel Moulton and today we'll be talking about my book Cries of Joy which is a psychological thriller um, where, published by Red Dragon Publishing uh, and this story is about a woman's survival uh, in lockdown with a violent husband. Um, I'll read you the synopsis. It's uh, Anna is married with two children, 10 year old Mikey and six month old Joy. Uh, since the first lockdown struck, forcing everyone to stay indoors, her husband Graham has been declining mentally. He focuses on the horrors of what the virus has done to people and what the conspiracy theorists prophesy for the future. Despite her tiring efforts to save her marriage, when Graham starts to grow violent, she knows she cannot stay. For her safety as well as the children, Anna takes her chance and begins to pack enough to leave when her husband bursts through the door, covered in blood, and tells her the virus is here. Now it gets pretty tense and quite violent, um, and it is a really hard hitting book. Uh, but hopefully, uh, you'll all like it. <laughs> <laughs> what made you decide to set something during lockdown? Uh, well, I, I, I wrote it, I wrote it in lockdown, um, and it was the first time I've ever, ever sat to actually try and write something because, uh, I had a lot of time on my hands like everyone else and um i just thought it would be something interesting to write about um i think that there's a lot of different aspects throughout the book that sort of touch on what a lot of people experienced um in lockdown and ho hopefully some not so much stuff that people experience in lockdown um but yeah so that's why uh that's why i chose to write it about that Did it not feel a bit, um, especially writing it in lockdown, did it not feel a bit sort of? Yeah, it sort of, yeah, it felt um, a little bit, a little bit too real at, at times in, in certain uh, aspects. Because when it, when lockdown first happened and we didn't know uh, what the virus would do or what it would get to. And we were in a, in a position um, as uh, we've got vulnerable people in our house. So we was sent letters and. Uh, we had phone calls from the doctor saying that, um, you know, my wife and daughter couldn't actually go outside to to play and we had to, we could crack a window and that was all we could do. Um, so that was pretty scary. So um, that aspect of the book was quite easy to write about, but also uh, quite real. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have you got a dog in the background? We have, yeah, and I think the Amazon man's here, which is why he's uh, <laughs> started barking. It's all right, he's gone now. No, it's fine. You're always welcome. <laughs> a, a dog visitor is always welcome. <laughs> uh, What's the reception been like to your book? So far, uh, very good. Um, the, the, the reviews that are sort of trickling through at the minute are all, you know, very positive um as some people have said it's been maybe too dark for them but they've enjoyed reading it um but that that is the point it's supposed to be an uncomfortable book and it's supposed to be shocking and um and and difficult to read um but yeah a lot uh, a lot of people seem to seem to like it which is uh, good at what point do you think something becomes too shocking though I don't know really. I think that's uh, that's subjective uh, to the reader. I mean, a lot of people just don't like to read that sort of thing. Um, I was just talking to a couple of people today, and uh, I was listening to a Stephen King audiobook, and they they said they said, "Oh no, don't like him. He's too much," and that is too much for some people. Um, some people just like a, you know a, a straight up crime uh, drama. Um, so I don't know where the boundaries would would be. I know this one it is uh, is quite shocking. I don't know. Have you read Cries of Joy? I have. Yeah. What did you think? I thought it was a bit too dark for me. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's uh, it can be can be uh, too dark for some people. Uh, someone on here, I can't see the name. They've just because it comes up as a Facebook user. Has asked if it's difficult writing about children and families in difficult situations. 
it was it was it was difficult to write it and it was difficult to read it back um and then during the publishing process i've had to read it like a dozen times again um and it was it was hard uh to write about but i felt that it needed to it, i felt that it needed to be as hard hitting um and as graphic as it, as it is to get across how how awful um it can be being stuck in the house with a violent a violent person in this case a, a violent man um and i know i mean during lockdown there was a lot of stories coming out um in the news of of women and children and, and men and people who would normally have time to get away from their abusers by going to work or going to school doing something else to suddenly have that taken away from them and instead were subjected to 24 hours a day uh being stuck in with this you know a horrible person that they wanted to get away from um and that, that sort of aspect was what i really wanted to hit on in the book as well which i hope which i hope i have um just to show you know it can be a really awful situation for some people one of the reviews i got was that the scariest thing about this book is that it could happen um which yeah which is which is awful to think about uh tg wants to know how you change your mindset to write something so dark um how do i change my mindset uh i suppose you just sort of have to switch off and th and think think about the the outcome of the book and how i don't know i suppose think that some people have to go through this for real and they don't have they they don't have the opportunity to pull away so i think it was important to just sort of sit in a room by myself get into the the story and the characters um and 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 just write it there were times when i had to take a break and i couldn't write about it you know um i had to write something a bit lighter uh but it was hard to get into the mindset of it um but we all know people who s suffer from you know domestic abuse in one form or another um so i felt it was important to write about it how do you um how do you follow that up what are you working on now nothing as horrible as this uh this is this will probably be the darkest darkest book that i'll ever write what what i want to head towards is uh some you know supernatural thriller something that sort of combines the 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 horrors and the character development of what Stephen King does and and Dean Koontz do and mix it with uh like a a thrilling aspect where there's twists and turns like Linwood Barclay or uh, Richard Chismar um that sort of thing and and mix it up have something you know have something that appeals to, to everybody that isn't quite as dark but has horrible things in it if you if you know what i mean so would you keep that relatively normal or would you verge into sort of being a bit more in the kind of urban fantasy genre? um i think it's maybe i might go into something more fantasy um but i think i'd i'd stick with the realism uh just because i think it grounds anything that I write a bit more I think I find when I'm writing if I try and go too fantastical that I sort of lose the way and I can you know what I can write it and think oh it's amazing and when I read it back I can think oh it seems a bit hard to believe it so I'm a bit more of a realist uh, writer I would say yeah um Leslie says she likes a supernatural thriller as long as it's not full-on horror yeah so that's the sort of thing that you know I, I like the supernatural twists um it sort of gives you a bit more leeway of of where you can take stuff and uh you know you can you can just branch out that little bit further um and it also adds in a great horror aspect um have you though, read, sorry go on have you read the essex witch museum series i haven't no because i think they do that really well they're like oh, a, okay a kind of crime investigation based on a real case but there's a proper hint of like super right. witchcraft and things it was really creepy okay but, well i might check that out yeah so definitely might be, might be where you're going like yeah 
yeah well that's uh yeah so i mean i'm working on something now which hopefully will be ready uh soon and then uh we'll see what uh, red dragon think of it and uh, hopefully get it out there how did you find red dragon um i just i came across them on facebook i think i saw a few adverts for conrad jones um and then i saw this red dragon publishing and I'd had cries of joy sort of in the proverbial shelf, you know, in the drawer that I thought would never come out. Um, I'd sent it to a few literary agents uh, a couple of years ago when I'd finished it and um, nobody had that much interest really at first. So I rejigged it, took on some advice that they gave me. Um, But then I saw Red Dragon and they they sort of seemed, they seemed really good, professional and they, what they were after i thought sounded like cries of joy a good psychological thriller that's dark um and hard hitting so i sent it into them and uh yeah they got back in touch uh the next day and they said they loved it and they'd love to see the whole thing um and it just went from there really but they've been they've been really good uh, it's, it's been a really good learning curve for me uh yeah it's really sort of opened my eyes to how much goes into publishing a book and the amount of work, um, the editing process, working with an editor was was uh, pretty cool. Getting to see all their little, all their comments um, on my manuscript and the way that they tightened it up and made it flow better um, was was excellent. So yeah, Red Dragon, Red Dragon have been was have been brilliant, and all the other authors with them, uh, really really talented. I'm working my way through a lot of their books at the minute, and um, I've just finished five down by tom sibson and that was a fantastic book i really like that yeah i 100 percent agree with you that might end up being on my book of the year list yeah it is it's on mine it was really good i know york pretty well well i, th- I thought i knew york pretty well <laughs> um but yeah he's got some fantastic fantastic points in that book and yeah yeah he worked that really well so yeah i'm privileged to be part of such a such a good team really I also like they had one of the nerdiest lines I think I've read in ages in his Which, book, like comparing um, something to like a diesel punk cosplay. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was very good. <laughs> You've been complimented on your Iron Maiden shirt. Oh, have I? Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, my number of the beast. <laughs> Doing very Mike Raven. He likes a good um, band t shirt when he's doing author events. <laughs> That's why I thought I'll pick this out special. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you've been asked if during ed- so I've asked you this one. You've been asked if during editing you enhanced any dark scenes or pulled them back a bit. Um, I pulled I pulled one back a little bit. Um, but the the main we didn't there wasn't much to, to pull back or or add to it was by the time i'd got it to red dragon i'd complete i'd done so much work on it to to try and get it as good as i could um so they they didn't want to change too much just just the odd little bits and continuity things uh but no it was about as dark as it got the only the only thing that i took out was a little bit more detail which didn't add much it only slowed down the tension i suppose um so that's what we took out but no there was it there wasn't much anything darker i could think of i don't think to to put in it <laughs> no <I can't. laughs> uh tom has said thank you babe. oh yes tom in yeah <laughs> yes it was his turn last i think it was last week yeah i didn't get to see it live but i watched it afterwards yeah yeah he did um, good so, uh, and T's asked if you go to the opposite end of the spectrum and do something much lighter. Um, I don't think I don't think I could. I think I'm I'm really like all I really read is is horror, um, and then I read um, a few crime things. Uh, so I think I'd I'd struggle going to the to the lighter end. Um, I don't. Uh, I don't, yeah, so I don't. I don't think I would. I don't think. I, I don't think I'd be able to come up with anything good enough. I think my my strength comes in my ability to write dark, gory things that you know 
a bit scary and a bit suspenseful. So who are your go-to horror authors? I call them like you shut up and take my money authors. No ones that you'll just buy. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm sure everybody's the same, but it's it's Stephen King. Um, every every time I, I finish a Stephen King book, I feel, you know, I feel like I've been on such a journey because it's not only the, the horrors that he puts you through, it's the characters that he creates uh, and the world that he creates, really. And that's something that I think every writer tries to emulate. Um, but he's he's probably just too good. He's, you know, the, the, the chance of reaching that level is... Yeah, probably impossible. But aside from him, uh, there's uh, Joe Hill, who's got some really good books. Uh, Dean Koontz, um, and then uh, I've got all sorts really. Richard Layman's really good. Um, th and then there's a lot of indie horror authors. I don't know if you like your horror, but there's like Daniel Volp and uh, Adam Hulse, uh, M. L. Rayner, Jim Odie, who were also uh, dragons. Uh, so that, yeah, there's quite a lot of indie authors at the minute in, in horror that are really, really good. Yeah, I've read Jim Odie. He's great. Um, mm. I like Grady Hendrix and Paul Tremblay as well. Yes, so. yes, Grady Hendrix. Um, I like the uh, My Best Friend's Exorcism. I, yeah. yeah, I read that and Horror Store. Uh, and there was another one of his that I read. Uh, but yeah, he's yeah he's quite good. He seems quite popular as well on all the Facebook groups. Grady Hendrix. Um, not as I'm a bit 50 50 on Stephen King now, I've got to admit. I either really, really, really like his books or I don't finish them. Right. Okay. <laughs> they can be quite long, though, as well, can't they? No, I don't mind the length. That's not a problem. Um, but yeah. Some, yeah, some you just can't get into. On with some of them. But Joe right. Hill, I'll buy anything he writes. Joe Hill, yeah. He's really good. I think the last one, uh, oh, I, I read the the 20th century ghosts with the with black phone story in um and the fireman just finished the fireman as well that was really good 20th century ghost still haunts me <laughs> yeah. Yeah. there were some really good stories in that i'm refusing to watch the black phone because i read it yeah 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 i loved it i loved his story i love that he, he sold it to a british magazine for 35 pounds as well when he first wrote it <laughs> I believe that. I think Heart Shaped Fox is my favourite of his. Yes, yeah, that yeah, that's my favourite. That's one of my favourite horror novels. I think that was that's up there with uh, some of his dad's work. Because um, I've got a signed copy. You what? <laughs> I've got a signed copy. Oh, have you? Mm. Oh, nice. He's going to Leeds. Did he? Yeah, a while ago, he came to Leeds and did a talk at the Waterstones. Oh, right. Oh, well, that would have been cool. I missed that. And I was like, unsure. I was like, which one? 20th Century Ghosts or like Heart Shaped Fox? Which one do I get signed? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think you made the right choice. That is a great book. Signed Joe Hill. So, <laughs> uh, tease us what would be your favourite way of killing a character if you got the chance. My favourite way of killing a character? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a uh, that's a good one. Um, favorite way of killing the character? Yeah, probably as horrifically as possible. <laughs> um, yeah, I like a uh, I like a sudden death. I think uh, a long build up, and then I like it when they get to the point where you don't feel like they're gonna, you know, that they're actually gonna survive it, but then but then they don't. Uh, so I think the the shock death is is one of the best. I'm quite fond of um, an excellent poison use in a book. Okay, uh, okay, yeah, I know. I'm uh, yeah. Poisons. I don't, I never go for the poison for, uh, for the poison route. I always go for the the hand to hand uh, combat sort of death, really. <laughs> I think um, I'm really interested in biology and there's some really interesting, like, just natural reasons. Oh, yeah. Well, we went to um, the uh, castle in Northumberland, An Annick Castle, and they've got the death garden and it's all the poisonous plants and it's got all the plants there that can be turned into poisons and it's got all the serial killers that you have used it 
throughout time. I don't know if you've ever been, but that's really, uh, really interesting. Yeah, it's um, bacteria as well. You can get some good ones from things like that. Yeah, yeah. Someone's uh oh, this is going to be Tom. He says he'll have to introduce you to Paul Finch. He likes to write about a good, brutal hand to hand death. <laughs> Paul also does write horror. All right, okay. He's That's one of those crime authors that does both. Like he writes straight kind of crime books. Yeah. He does write horror stuff as well. Right, okay. I'll have to check him out. Because that's definitely yeah. the the sort of way I'd like to go. Because I love a good twisty crime, but when I you know I read stuff like Tom Tom's work, uh, Five Down, with all those uh, you know cryptic clues, and I just don't, I don't think I'd be clever enough to uh, to, to <laughs> sort of link all that together. I, I don't know how he does it. That's yeah, it's really clever work. Um, so uh, yeah, I'd like to do something like that, but then adding a, a supernatural or horror element in in some way to sort of drive the the book on and add in more suspense i suppose than constant you know thinking and trying to work stuff out you've also been asked if you'd if you named any characters after real people uh no uh no i didn't um i was reading the two books i read as i was writing it was misery and um cujo and so Anna Willow was sort of, you know, the, the initials AW after Annie Wilkes. Um, but the rest just, I just sort of plucked them out of thin air. Oh, Barney the dog. My friend's got a dog named Barney. So that's about, that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Who reads your book first? My wife. Always. Um, yeah, she's, she's the first person I go to, like, I've, I've written this will you read that and uh, she's re she's a really fast reader uh she read cries of joy just in like five hours or something um and when she put it down she was like darling what is <laughs> what are you doing what's that uh you know um she, but she loved it she said it she said it was really good and she said it was dark and she, as i said is it too much and she said she, well she said no she said you're you're a horror author um and that's horrifying so it's nail on the head but yeah, it's it's all it's always my wife who, who reads stuff first, and then once I've got her okay, I send it off. What did you do for your release day? We, uh, my wife, I I wasn't gonna do anything, um, and then my wife said, "Oh, we'll go out for a for a meal." So we booked a a dinner at the at the Pine Martin in Harrogate, and then. Uh, when I got there, all my friends and their wives and everyone was there. So we ended up having this big dinner and uh, uh, champagne. And yeah, it was really nice. Yeah. So I didn't think we'd do anything, but we had a nice surprise celebration. Have you got any other author events booked? Um, uh, nothing booked as in set in stone, but there will be one in the Harrogate uh, Waterstones. Um, I'm just waiting for a, for a date to be figured out um they've ordered a few of the books in for hopefully putting in the window and then they'll be doing an author event with a couple of other authors i don't know who yet but it should be end of september if you want to pop down yeah i'll see if i can um it's a bit of a pain to get to how we get from from leeds yeah yeah <laughs> I know because he's got. They've got some really good events at Harrogate Waterstones. Yeah, they've. I've noticed they've. They've really sort of upped it. Um, I. I think anyway with. Uh, with all their events, I know they've just. They've had a manga night or something. My stepdaughter's mad on that sort of thing, um, and they sold out, which I thought was pretty good. I didn't. I didn't know that there were many manga enthusiasts in. Uh, in Harrogate, but it turns out there are. There's quite a lot of manga enthusiasts all around. Seems to be. <laughs> um, that is follows nicely on from one of my favourite questions that I like to ask at an author chat, which is, would you make a graphic novel version of one of your books? Uh, I'd love to. I can't draw for Toffee, but um, yeah, if if someone wanted to make a graphic novel out of something that I wrote, uh, definitely, definitely. I, I love comics um they've sort of what i started 
reading when I was younger, uh, you know, Spider-Man and old Marvel comics and DC and stuff. So, yeah, definitely. I'd love a, a graphic novel. Get an artist's perspective of what they, you know, interpret from from my book. Yeah, I always ask because I love love a good graphic novel. Mm. Yeah, That's definitely. Fun. We've got a really good event booked for Speakfast. We're going to have some people who write graphic novels. Oh, really? Mm. Oh, that... time. Right, that'll be, be great. Uh, oh, someone's saying they want to visit the Poison Garden. Uh, T says, what's your favourite way to relax away from the darkness? Um, a glass of wine and a good series on Netflix with with my wife and uh playing with kids yeah because i write for a block of two or three hours every night um, and then sort of stay away from it really in in the day and on an evening fair enough uh mm -hmm. what kind of things do you like on netflix on netflix uh breaking bad uh, Better Call Saul, those sorts of things, um, and then all the all the horror stuff. Really, I like Stranger Things. Do you like Stranger Things? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think, what else have we watched on Netflix? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. All all sorts. Anything horror on there? They've got some. They've got some good horror horror uh, series on there. The um, can't think what it's called now. Uh, there's like the haunting on Hill House, stuff like that. Haunting of Blind Manor. Yeah, I don't watch horror things. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, we watch them all the time. My and, best uh, friend, um, one of my best friends in the world, makes horror props. Oh really? Yeah, he's an art teacher. He um he makes horror props and sells them, like really good ones, like Chucky dolls and things like that. And yeah. he loves horror movies. Just no. <laughs> you just don't like it. No, won't watch a horror film. No. Oh yeah, no, we, yeah, we love we love, love horror lot, films. But I'm like no. <laughs> no. Uh, what do you like to watch on Netflix? Me, well, if I'm with my husband, things like Stranger Things. But if I'm yeah. on my own, uh, things like Jane Austen adaptations. Oh right, okay. Okay, I see. Yeah, you know, different different end of the spectrum then. Mm -hmm. Like a good like <sighs> drama. Sam is watching Homeland again. Home. Oh yeah, yeah. Homeland is good. I know it says Facebook user on there, but I know it is Sam just because we message so often. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just, it's like a little psychic kind of like a new. <laughs> Uh, someone said, talking of which, do you have a specific image of each of your characters in your head? No, not 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 too specific. Um, the uh, the antagonist in this, uh, Graham, I sort of have a, you know, an image of him. But, um, yeah, mainly just a, a really sort of big, grotesque man who just really let himself go. Uh, dead behind the eyes sort of thing. Um, but no, uh, especially when I'm writing stuff too dark, don't like to think of them too much. <laughs> so you haven't cast it in your head if there was a like a TV or a... no, no, not really. Um, this, sometimes you know, sort of yes, watch watch something. I think oh yeah, she no, she yeah, she'd make a good a good Anna or or something. Um, but no, I've uh, yeah, not thought of of casting. I'll let the producers do that if ever it gets made. <laughs> the thing is, even if they got option, they don't always get made, do they? No, no. But fingers crossed, you never know. Um, do you ever have like meetups with the other Red Dragon authors? Not yet. Um, me and Tom have tried and failed um a couple of times. <laughs> uh 
I think COVID got in the way once, um, and then uh, my I think my kids were were poorly an, another time. Um, but I'm sure we will soon because I, I, Tom's not far from me. Uh, I don't think. Um, but uh, he's there. We message quite often, Tom and I. Um, and he's, and he's really supportive, and I try and support him as well. Were you at the Harrogate Crime Festival? Because Tom was at that. Uh, I wasn't. Um, we was away, and I we was able to go on the Sunday. I thought it was an all day Sunday, so we popped down Sunday morning, and it was only half a <laughs> half a day, and everyone had gone home. So uh, yeah, we were there for a little bit, but we'll definitely be going to the next one. Yeah, you want to do like the Saturday, really? Yeah, it looked great. I was watching. Uh, I think you and then uh, uh, Donna, who I follow, she's uh, she was there as well, and uh, and Conrad and everyone obviously was there. I could see all the photos. It looked uh, yeah, it looked like a great time. Oh, yeah, it was it was good fun to go for a while because I haven't made it since like right. Um, I don't think. Right. I really want. I I was away the the year before as well because it was. Uh, Ian Rankin and um, Richard Osman was there. Uh, I don't know if you've read the Thursday Murder Club. I did. I really liked the Thursday Murder yeah, Club. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, it was great. I've got the second one uh, on my shelf. I know the third one's coming out, isn't it? But, uh, so I need to get around to it. But yeah, I, I really liked it. So I would have, yeah, I would have loved to have met him. But never mind. Do you find reading sort of writing sort of slows you down with reading? Yeah, definitely. Because I'm reading my own stuff so much of the time, and then I'm, and then I'm writing. But uh, the bulk of my reading now really comes from audio books because uh, I can just listen to them in the car, or you know, when I'm out in garden or whatever. Um, but uh, yeah, I try and read shorter books, physical books. Um, because I can just you know get find half an hour here and there and get get through them and but yeah it does it does impact my reading yeah I am um, I find that with the author chat it's, yeah. sort of, it's the reason why Richard Osman's second book is still on my book pile yeah <laughs> yeah so I, I I try and do two books a week um, but unfortunately, and there's so many to choose from as well. It's it's. Uh, I just finished one, and then it was so hard to choose what what to read next. There's so many that I want to read, and then Stephen King's got his new one coming out next week, so I want to be able to read that. Fair enough. Can uh, do you, you can only do what you can do. <laughs> okay. Uh, he has asked if you've ever set up a character for a major fall and then rescued them with a change of heart. Um, no, I nearly rescued someone in this one. I don't want to give anything away. Um, but I stopped myself from doing that. Sometimes you do once because you write about them so much and, uh, you know, putting all the little mannerisms and the personality traits and everything. And, uh, yeah, you saw I don't want Want, don't want them to 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 die or anything bad happen to them towards the end. But no, I always I always persevere. <laughs> she is also an author. She writes some okay, really interesting things. What sort of stuff does does she write? Oh, I don't really know how to explain to you. She's okay. got all sorts of interesting books. Um, she's got some in our anthology, I think. I might be wrong, but she's definitely got some. She sort of sold a character in one of our charity auctions. Okay. With like members in some of her stories. And they're a bit more sort of crimey and scary. And then she's got some that are more paranormal and like supernatural and interesting. Okay. Well, that sounds cool. I like to use books. Mm. Oh, well, we'll have to Where check them out. Right, it says TK Gearing. And is also one of our admins. So okay. Oh well, yeah. So yeah, you'll have to send me uh, send me the details. I'll check that out. Uh, someone has asked what resources you found useful as an author. What resources? Um, mm. um, I think just talking to to different people in different walks of life is really 
uh, really helpful because uh, you get so many different views and different opinions on on all sorts of things. And when you're writing about a certain topic, um, like I did with with Cries of Joy, uh, it was it was interesting to get different people's opinions on uh, COVID and you know and, and all those sorts of things. Uh, so that was really resourceful. Just talking to people. Um, the other thing was um, other books um taking tips and bits from other writers uh you know um writing books done by other famous authors uh stephen king's on writing was really helpful um when it came to self-editing and you know progression and stuff like that what was the research like for your book because obviously it's kind of very enclosed in terms of the story but there must still have been things you had to go away and and find out more about yeah um yeah there were certain aspects um a lot of them was uh sort of going through um people's stories of you know and experiences of what they'd been through um you know in in terms of you know surviving domestic abuse and uh things like that um other people's lockdown stories. Um, yeah. And then the news, uh, all the, all those sorts of things. Um, and then just the internet really. Cause when I was writing it, I couldn't go out or, or do anything. So it was like looking for books, looking for stories, um, talking to people online about other experiences. I, I know someone who volunteered for women's aid, who was really helpful in explaining like a, the mindset of somebody in those positions and how hard it is to leave when you're in them. Um, also an interesting stat was uh, people in those positions when they've made a decision to leave and the abuser knows this, the abuser is more likely to, to do something rash to stop them, um, which happens in this. Uh, you've been asked here if when you discuss your work with your wife after she's read it, do you always see things in the same way? Such as the way you portrayed a character. Um yeah, uh yeah, I think I think we do. Sometimes she'll she'll point stuff out like uh you know, if something doesn't doesn't make sense or she, uh yeah, there's some things that she she didn't want me to do. She's just <laughs> she's sat over there, she just said, you know, <laughs> yeah, there's some things she didn't want me to to happen in the in the story but that's uh yeah that's more plot point than than anything else um but no yeah we tend to see see things the same way when when she reads it um if there is anything or if if there's a boring pit she'll say that's boring and it doesn't add anything she was like don't put it in take it out um stuff like that so she's quite good as a, a general reader to to help me edit it I suppose if she tells me that's a bit boring, then someone else is going to find it boring as well. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have many other readers of it before it went out? Do you have like a no. trusted team of beta readers? No, I think I will for my next one. Um, I think I'll uh, have a bit more confidence to do it because it was so alien to me. And when I wrote it, I didn't expect it to be published or to even show it to anybody. It was just uh, something that I wanted to do. Uh, to see if I could do it. Um, so I was far too nervous to tell anyone that I'd even wrote a book, let alone let them read it. Um, but I think I've got a bit more confidence now. So I'd be more than happy, I think, to let people read my next stuff. I've been nervous about letting people read this, people that know me, uh, my friends and family and stuff, because of how dark it is. Um, I know my mum rang me tonight and she was like, I've finished your book. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, she said it was very good, but yeah, very dark. Like you, I suppose, she said it was a bit too dark for her. But... <laughs> well written. But well written, yeah, so mm. that's good. That's the main thing. Yeah, it's very well written, but I'm Thank more you. of a cosy crime kind of girl. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> If I'm honest, <laughs> yeah, I thought I thought it, it, yeah, it might have been a bit too too dark for the uh, for the crime fans, but you never know. 
I mean, I, I do, like, I, I will dip into reading horror and stuff, but I don't, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, wouldn't be your book of choice. But, like, you can still appreciate the writing. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, despite the, the content matter, yeah, I think I think it flows really well, and I think as a story, it is really good, um, if I do say so myself. Um and I think it would be if it ever got adapted, I think it would adapt really well. Yeah, and it probably something like a HBO show. Yeah. They're yeah. not afraid of going quite dark, are they? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think I think they'd be able to do something pretty cool with it. Um so if they're watching. Were you tempted to sort of put links to things like women's aid and stuff into your book? I was. Um, I was going to put stuff like that. I was going to put, uh, you know, the the helpline um, and, and, and things. And I think if another edition gets published, then I probably will. I think just because it was my first book and um, it's my first time ever, you know, publishing. Um, but I think we just wanted I just wanted to get the book out there, really. Um, but I think if there is another edition, I will definitely put those sorts of things in there. I was going to have it in the actual content of the of the book as in the story i was going to try and try and fit that in somewhere um but there, there wasn't really anywhere to, to fit it in because as you read the story all of the stuff gets taken away and all the internet gets pulled and there's no power and all that sort of stuff um so she wouldn't have been able to find it so that's why i avoided putting it in fair enough i think there's quite a good spread of things coming out from red dragon as well at the moment isn't it because there's obviously they've got, they've got some really talented people um yeah i mean lisa sell uh, i've read the watcher um which was really good and she's got a new one coming out um uh killing kindness i think i might have got that wrong but um yeah something like that and she, yeah so she's really good um i'm about to start ml rayner's echoes of home um which seems really good and he's just had an audio book oh he's been commissioned for an audio book of it um and jim odies i've started reading the hudson bell series of jim odies work so yeah red dragon i think uh they seem to be sort of taking off at the minute um doing really good things which is which is nice to be a part of they publish robin roughly as well don't they i think yeah, he's just been uh, just been added, hasn't he? He's got some really good books. Yeah, Mark Mark Tilbury. Um, I'm yet to to dive in. I own a couple of his, um, but I'm yet to read one. But I hear he's quite dark, twisted uh, twisted Tilbury. So I'd uh, I'm looking forward to reading one of his as well. Uh, someone said that Lisa Sal has one of their favourite Twitter feeds. Yeah, she's very cat orientated. Lisa Sell on her Twitter, it seems. How are you finding doing all this like kind of social media aspect of being an author? Awful. <laughs> uh, I, it's like this is so far out of my comfort zone. Um, I'd rather just sort of write in the shadows and just put it out there and let people read it. Um, so, yeah, doing this sort of thing uh, is an experience. It's not one, um, you know, I was really nervous about doing it. Uh, but it's uh, yeah, it's it's been all right. I think. Mm, I, think I, was I, need, I think I was more nervous than I needed to be. Um, but it's 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 quite nice. And when I first I've I've did a few a couple of giveaways on the the Facebook groups, and those quite well received. Um, so that was nice. Um, and quite a few people uh, downloaded the book when it first came out. So hopefully some reviews will start coming in soon when they. You know, when they get around to reading it. Sam has said we've done hundreds now, and she's still nervous. She's still, still nervous, Harry, even though it says Facebook user. <laughs> <laughs> she's still nervous every time you hide it well. Uh, well thank you. Yeah, no, it's yeah, it's very nerve wracking. It's just so uh, so alien to me. I think never, before before this, I was never I never did anything on social media anyway. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, this is all new to me, really. It was new to us in lockdown, doing the like video things. Mm, okay, yeah. It was yeah. my last 
crazy idea because Harrogate got cancelled and he was like, we could do our own Harrogate. Right, yeah, yeah. Well, online. And as he does with many of his ideas, he like shared it and then we did it. Right, yeah, yeah. Well, no, it's yeah. I think it's I think it's really good. <laughs> I really like it. <laughs> I mean, he started the group as well, so he did. He did good. He's yeah. like, <laughs> it's, a, it's a good idea. Uh, yeah. Um, uh. But yeah. So, uh, have you got like an author group now? Jim Odie is a good person to look at for what he does. He's got like a little author group. Sorry, I lost, I lost you then. You went, you disappeared. Oh, sorry. What did you say? Have you got things like an author group for readers? Because like you were saying, you've been reading Jim Odie's books and he's got, he's quite a good person to look at for like how he does his social media because he's got like kind of author groups and things. Yeah. So I've not, I've not got, um, I've not got anything um, at the minute. The, the only, uh, exclusive group I'm I'm in at the minute is is the Red Dragon group, um, but aside from that I've not done much. I need to I could probably do with speaking to Jim, uh, to be honest to get some tips from him, because um, I see I mean I always see his stuff on Facebook and his advertising and you know he's always in these groups and he's always present, uh, which I think is a big part of it. If you you know for an indie author you need a good social media presence. Um, and he seems to do it really well. So, yeah, I might have to pick his brain on what to do. I know there's a few uh, American authors. There's uh, Nick Roberts, uh, who wrote The Exorcist's House. Um, and uh, he's just sort of blown up at the minute. Every, everyone's buying it. It's doing really well. Um, and he he does loads on social media. Not so much Twitter, but Facebook is, is, uh, is pretty big with. Apparently TikTok's quite good for... I wouldn't know where to start with TikTok, to be honest. Um, <laughs> uh, I know, I know TikTok. Oh, there's BookTok or something. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I know Facebook, and I'm comfortable with that. Um, and then Twitter a little bit, uh, but like Instagram and TikTok and stuff is is yeah, like another world. I but can I'll... do Instagram, but TikTok, no. Yeah, I always forget I've got Instagram. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah no i'll have to i'll have to try i suppose set up a tiktok account and yeah do something and then if you're looking for someone who's good at that abby osborne abby osborne mm. right okay she's quite good at the tiktoking apparently right. i don't i'm not one to ask i i i launched it for about a minute and gave up and refused to <laughs> Uh, like let's ask you a group favorite question now have you ever acted out a scene as you've written it uh no no i haven't <laughs> not so far anyway um no no i haven't uh acted anything out i suppose i've i've sort of done spoken the lines out loud in character maybe that counts to try to try and get a feel of you know if the dialogue's going and you know doing the right job um but yeah aside from that no i've never uh, properly acted one out that was quite interesting though that's quite a good idea i'll have to see if my wife will be up for that <laughs> <laughs> She's laughing in the background there are so many people so abby osborne i just mentioned to you she tied her husband up to see if you could do all right <laughs> an escape i think and there's right. people who've been like shot in a boot. There's people who've like acted out fights, like held knives to their throats. It's the best question. <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. Put you putting yourself in dangerous scenarios to see if you can get out. To yeah, see if it's feasible that your character does. Yeah. Well, and my That's favorite so one that wasn't dangerous was Jane Isaac. She buried a lamb shoulder in concrete. <laughs> Right, okay. yeah, but they don't like apparently things if you bury them in concrete don't decompose. So she wanted right, to okay. it, so she buried something in concrete, left it for a year, and then dug it back up to see what would happen. See if it was true. That's that's amazing. I didn't know that. I'll just jot that down. So, but Very I appreciate true. the science experiment of it, you know. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, other group favorite questions and what are your most memorable moments as an author? My most memorable as an author, well, I've not been an author for very long. Um, my, you still have one at least. Then. I th my most memorable was, um, I think probably getting the contract. Uh, I was I was in Valley Gardens. Um, there was a, a big fair going on, and I've been I've been trying for years to uh, get a book published. Um, and yeah, I was just stood in, in, in line waiting to take my kids on a ride. And then Conrad emailed me and he said, we love it. Well, here's a three year contract. And uh, yeah, that's probably the best, uh, my best memory so far. Hopefully there'll be lots more. Uh, what was the last scene that you wrote without giving away a spoiler? Uh, the last scene that I wrote was, um, was a doctor performing a an autopsy um on a body that had been found um at the bottom of a dried up reservoir it's but then yeah yeah that's the super a supernatural thriller sort of mystery novel that i'm working on at the minute that's nearly done when do you think that'll come out um uh well, I'll have it. I'll, I think another another week, and then I'll have it finished, and then I'll read through it and do any little bits of editing and any changes, and then I'll uh, send it off to uh, to Red Dragon and see what they think. So, I don't know. Well, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, what have you read this year that's been sort of your read of the year? Uh, five down. We touched on that. Uh, yeah, Five Down by Tom uh, Tom Sibson. Uh, the Exorcist's House uh, was really good. Um, another by an indie author. Uh, Left to You, don't know if you've heard of that, uh, by uh, uh, an author called Daniel Volp, which is, um, yeah, it's a, it's a supernatural thriller which sort of goes in, in and out of the Holocaust and stuff. And it's it's really touching and heartbreaking and horrifying all at once so i say that at the minute they're they're my top three to stay away from a stephen king i could name a couple of stephen kings but mm -hmm. yeah we'll stay stick with the indie authors <laughs> fair enough yeah i don't agree five down probably high on my list as well. yeah so it was just so good um i read it while i was i was going on holiday um and i almost read it all just on the on the on the plane because it was just so good Every, every every chapter I just wanted to carry on um yeah I thought I thought it did really really well but it's a good sort of sign of the quality I think that is coming out of red dragon that yeah exactly yeah sometimes I, I think uh, you know for me to be with them yeah yeah they're really producing some top quality stuff uh Tia said it's an interesting interview she doesn't often read on the dark side so she's enjoying okay. it. oh well good good yeah hopefully she'll check out the book it's nice to it'd be nice to see what people think especially in the in the crime crime group do you know there are some sort of members in the crime group because i think crime sort of encompasses quite a lot doesn't it you know like mm. we have a we have like a Halloween spook fest, for instance, that mm. always looks at sort of that darker edge yeah. and things. Um, so you can go all the way up to the quite mm. sort of borderline with horror. And then you can, you know, have like your Richard Osmond's. Yeah, where it's, yeah, it's the lighter and it's, yeah. yeah. And I think that's the joy of it. There's like so much that, there's such a broad spectrum that can fit into it, I suppose. Um, yeah. So yeah, so I'm I'm sure uh, you know a lot of people will you know in in the group will like Cries of Joy, and I think you know quite a few of them will probably think it's too dark for them. Um, but you know, well, I saw Leslie Lloyd commenting further up, and she likes a dark book. Okay, well, check it out, Leslie. 
so there you go you know like and she's a good one um if she gets really into books because she does do really good reviews and things well that would be great yeah yeah it's uh there's a couple of reviews coming from america and um yeah she, they, they just said that it's because it touches on so many different uh themes and subjects it you know deals with loss and grief and past traumas as well as the the ongoing thing that's actually happening in the book uh you know the virus and the um you know the, the domestic the domestic abuse and stuff there's it touches on quite a few things and uh, you know sort of shape to help shape all you know the, all the characters um which is really good that people pick up on that and and enjoy that and take that away from the book when you know when they've finished it i think it's the sort of book that when you've finished reading it i think it'll stick with you for for a while um and you'll sort of you know it'll crop up in your mind at, at random times or, or at least i hope it does no i think you're right it sort of provokes thoughts mm. yeah we all know like a horrible film that we watched years ago or in our teens and it you know you always you, you think about it from time to time like oh yeah that was yeah that was that was awful what an awful scene and you know and hopefully this book has got a few of them well thank you for coming and joining us tonight for the interview thank you for having me it's so, been a pleasure um